Hey, it's Oscar here from the Coding Universe, and this is episode 7 of my Java game development series. In this episode, I'll cover it using deltas. So a delta represents the amount of milliseconds passed since the last frame update. Deltas are used to create frame-independent movement. So I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it timer demo. I'm going to add a private instance variable of type long and it's going to be called last frame. So this will represent the time in milliseconds of the last frame update. I'm also going to create a private method which returns long and the name will be get time. So we're going to return system or sys. get time times a thousand divided by sys get timer resolution so this line of code will return our time in milliseconds using the lightweight java game library sys class we're also going to create a method called get delta this code will be a bit more complicated the first line will save our current time. So long current time is get time. The second line of code will determine the difference between our current time and the last frame. This is going to be an integer and we'll call it delta. So type class to ints and then between parentheses current time minus last frame. Now we can set the last frame time to the current time. And then we can return the delta. Now before we enter the main loop, we're going to specify last frame is get time this will make it so that when we start the main loop and we calculate the delta it won't be something extremely large because the last frame will be set to zero now if I were to oops print out the delta you see it's about 16 now since we've frame capped our display to 60 frames per second this is the maximum our frame rate will ever be the delta will never be higher than 16 or 17 perhaps, but that's not really important. What's important is that the delta will always be larger or the same as 16, because the only thing that can happen to our frame rate is that it will drop. So it will drop below 60 frames per second, for example, 30 frames per second, and then the delta will increase, so our delta will always be larger than 16. We can create a new variable called x, and another variable called y. And in the main loop, you can say int delta is get delta. 
and x is x plus delta times 1 and y is y plus delta times 1. This one represents the horizontal speed and this one represents the vertical speed. So I can actually create a new variable called dx and another variable called dy which represent the dynamic x or horizontal movement and the dynamic y or vertical movement. So now we can draw a rectangle of x, y, x plus 30 and y plus 30. So we're going to draw a rectangle at x, y, and then the upper right corner will be x plus 30, and the bottom right corner will be y plus 30. If I run this, you'll see there's a there was a box here, and it went this way down. And I actually should slow this a bit down, so times zero point one. This will slow the movement down by 10 fold. So take note of the speed of this rectangle. And now I'm going to change the frame rate to 30. The speed is exactly the same. Even when I turn it to some turn it into 15 speed will stay the same. In fact, I can change this variable into any thing under 60. So even one, one frame per second, still the same speed. So this is the delta pattern. This was the coding universe. Till next time.